A journalist can write to inform and entertain, but also to expose corruption. That's the gist of investigative reporting. Stories that expose the misconduct of government and business, the rich and the powerful. It's a proud journalistic tradition, dating back to the days of Nellie Bly's expose of 19th century insane asylums, to Woodward and Bernstein's historic revelations about Watergate, to the more recent story of the Boston Globe uncovering a massive scandal of child molestation and cover-up within the local Catholic archdiocese, as profiled in the 2015 movie Spotlight. Now, when you talk about investigative journalism, what we mean is the investigation is the work of the reporter. If the city police do an investigation of someone and a reporter covers it, that's news, but it's not investigative reporting. The subject of an investigative reporting piece must involve something of importance to the readers. And the third criterion is that others are attempting to hide these matters from the public. Now, investigative reporting is similar to traditional news reporting in that you should be skeptical of any information you receive, but also try to remain objective. Focus tightly on a specific subject rather than on a broad problem. Collect as much information as you can and cultivate as many sources as possible. Most newsrooms work more like a factory assembly line. The reporter reports, the photographer photographs, the editor edits, and then at the last minute, the designer designs. But teamwork can help turn stories into appealing packages. First, make a copy of page 130 of the textbook, the package planning guide. Then start with your story idea in 25 words or less. If it takes longer to explain what your story is about, you likely don't have a strong focus. Then concentrate on the questions your readers will ask. Number one is always, why should I carry? If you don't have the answer, stop writing because no one is going to read something even the author doesn't think they should. Decide how you will answer the question. In a headline or deck, that's the subheadline, with the photo, in the text, or with a sidebar. And speaking of sidebars, there's a lot of options you can choose from, including a fast facts box, a checklist, glossary, timetable, map, the list goes on. Choose the best way to display the information for your story. Then you'll want to specify photos or illustrations. Let your photographer know what the story is about, and then the photographer can help suggest the best shots for your story, or maybe illustrations will fit better. These can take a while to design, so give your designer a heads up on the project. Then write your headline and deck. They might change a little as the story progresses, but doing so early in the planning phase will help keep you focused. Then set staff, deadlines, and lengths. Who's responsible for what? And when will they be done? Then you'll want to create a rough layout so you, the photographer, editor, and designer can agree on what the story is going to look like on the page. And that's how you turn your package planning worksheet on the left into the fully designed story package on the right. It's not hard. It just requires some forethought and some planning. Long blocks of text are one way to convey information, but let's be honest. How many of you took one look at the hair or textbook and let out a cheer when you saw it was filled with color pictures and short blocks of text? Isn't it easier to read than most of your other textbooks? To reach readers, be it for a class or for a newspaper, condense the data. Now I don't mean dumb it down, just make it visually appealing so that it's easier to read. To do so, consider a fast facts box. This is a short form that distills the five W's into a concise package that highlights key facts or provides compelling data. If you are reporting on an upcoming city council meeting, 
your fast facts bots would say what, when, and where the meeting is being held. Next, you have your bio box. This is a short form graphic that distills a person's biographical data into a box, usually to supplement a profile story. These are also helpful for stories covering speeches, where you can quickly provide details about your speaker without cluttering it up in the text of your story. Next is a checklist, a short form graphic that helps readers interact by providing an inventory of activities that they can check off as they complete the tasks. Planning a camping trip? Here's 10 things you must have and five that you can leave at home. Next is the list, another short form graphic that compellingly displays data in a list form, such as a top 10 list. How about the 10 best summer camp movies of all time? Now you have the step-by-step -step guide. Again, a short form graphic treatment that simplifies a complex process by breaking it down into a logical series of steps, such as the seven steps to filing for bankruptcy. You might also use a quiz. Again, short form treatment that allows readers to answer questions and participate in the stories. Should you file for bankruptcy? Answer these questions and find out. Next is the factual index. It's sometimes called a Harper's index, named for Harper's magazine that helped popularize the style. This presents statistics by having a setup in text followed by the punchline in numerals. How many people file for bankruptcy in your state, in your city? How many file more than once? How much does it cost you? And how much does it cost banks and credit card companies? This is all information you can include in a factual index. Next is a diagram. It shows readers an example with pointers indicating the significant parts. What cuts of meat come from what parts of the cow? That's something a diagram could explain really well. Next, you have the quote collection. This presents a sampling of one person's opinion on a variety of topics, or a sampling of opinions on one topic from a variety of sources. In our example earlier on setting up a baby's nursery, that story on nursery lighting was just a collection of quotes from parents with their ideas under the headings, what should I think about when choosing lighting for my baby's nursery, and what will I need for night feedings? Then you have the timeline. This shows the passage of time as a straight line with key events arranged in chronological order. These can be good for crime stories showing the evidence timeline or in any story where you want to include historical data.